things that have to do with rights and freedoms of human beings. They don't know that because they're never taught civilization principles. And what we're trying to do, knowing that people are lighting on our people quickly because the world politics is changing. Right now, the state of mind that our people are in, they are what you call a breeding ground for opportunists on both sides. With our people trying to sell them something that's unalienable, only because they don't know the difference between that which is unalienable and that which is sellable. That's only because they haven't been taught. They're still little boys and girls. Of course, their ego is in front of that because they're grown men. They swing wieners and shit. You know, got two dollars, which ain't money. You know, you can't tell them anything. And it's understandable you let them have that. However, the world is feeding off of them. And the conditions of our like this is setting the course of our events and our sociology. Because when we walk down the street, they assume any one of us is, is Negro. And they treat us accordingly and then we have to go through all this BS to prove ourselves because our brothers and sisters, by a mass degree, are incompetent. Because there's a set of rules of laws of the Black Codes and the Negro Acts that go with such persons. And since there's so many of them that are in this category, they're just assuming that everyone that looks like this is a Negro. Which is a classification. And then most of them are, are openly saying that they're black, which is an oral contract. But they don't know that because others have been teaching them that that's a nation in Africa. And so, no, the fact that they're even convoluted with it at all in law makes them what you would call dead in the eyes of law. Because the laws that govern humanity come from nations. It doesn't come from a box of crayons. So how do you argue with a man who thinks that crayons is how people are identified and then you know the man knows his nations and then he's sitting there debating with him what black people are and all this stuff and trying to defend it. You, it for you to stand there even arguing with him indicates that you got two donkeys. <laughs> no, in law. However, that's your brother and you love him. You don't want him to go through that, but he want to fight you because you won't call him black. He thinks that you're attacking him when actually you're attacking the brand that the Europeans used to steal his birthright. Meanwhile, he talking about power that he don't have. It's an oxymoron. Islam. Peace, Islam. I was reading um, Brother Pleasant Bay's book where he gave the sardine analogy. Can you yes. break that down, please? Because that's in other words, sardines, like as example, <clears throat> fishermen go out and they get all the little fish, and they just steam them, put them in the fish. I mean, in cans and everything. And every fish that you see in there is not necessarily exactly the same species. So they call them sardines. <laughs> After they cut, they cut their heads off, cut well, their tails yeah, they off, so you can't them. identify them. Uh -huh. do, do you understand what I'm saying? But yet, each one of them is not necessarily the same fish. Although a lot of them swim in schools, and a lot of them are the same fish, but a lot of them, they're what you call just generic fish. Small schools, they... Steam cups, sardines, or people think they're sardines. No you such thing as a sardine, people right? People who are Negro, Black, and Colored are classed together because it's a classification of people who have no rights. The brandings is to keep them divided from each other. Because if they all went in one direction, they would be empowered, even under a brand. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand what I'm saying? Although there would be certain limited international rights, they would have power even if they all agree to the same brand. But they don't even know it's a brand. And they don't know that the brand disallows them to inherit anything. They don't even know that they're classified as being constitutionally in a state of psychosis. There's a legal term that goes with that. I'll post that on the website. You'll see it. You understand what I'm saying? So we're looking at things right and wrong morally. You know what's right and wrong by your nature. You know uh, something's done wrong to you or someone's mistreated. And we're looking at the moral argument and think that the moral argument therefore puts us in the category of right. When the status is not right. Well, when the status is not right, the right law don't apply to you. This is what people are not doing. So without a proper legal status, i.e. status, 
rank in society, your capacities and your incapacities to exercise liberties in any society on the planet. It's not just here. Our concepts about some of these things are being told. A lot of times our people think that that's just our opinions for this moment that they're learning now. These principles that we're expressing are Rotarian. What is Rotarian? That means universal. I mean, these same principles apply in Russia too. You go there and call yourself light skin, orange skin, black guy and see how much rage you got. You let a, a, a Russian come here and talk about his Xing Hao name. See how many rights he got. It's on. You come selling me a pit bull, bull, bull talking about he's got all his shots and everything, and he goes meow. And see how <laughs> that goes along. And this is, we, our people don't understand these principles yet because no one has challenged their mind with these principles because they haven't been taught law. They don't know anything about stats, not that they don't in general, but. As a mass, our people have no idea that these things, these status principles, are the first issues at law in any area of civilization. You know, first, the, the first judicial issues is status, then you're talking judi uh, jurisdiction and venue, and then adjudication. They go to adjudication because the status is already neutralized. And they, they can claim the jurisdiction in a ministerial court even if it has no judicial powers. Because you're under a corporation, you're not under a natural person. This is what's in birth. This is the subtleties that's very important. And we went over it earlier. Yeah, for real. What was you going to ask? I just want to know, what would, what would the argument be to those who say the law don't mean nothing? Paperwork yeah. don't mean nothing. Contracts is something that the white man created, See, they so they don't need now, to honor listen, that. Now look at this. Because they just big this and bad. This is why, and, even like on this lesson, yeah, we show them what white man or free white person really is. We know that they think that white man means a European. That's the assumption annotated, right? Mm -hmm. That's the assumption. They don't even know that Europeans weren't called white man until the Knights of Columbus, Ku Klux Klan oath in 1854 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Chicago. Uh, Illinois. What were they referred to before red, that? Red, rednecks. Red men. Okay. Red man. All right. Now, as a matter of fact, when you go into world history, you go into European history, to Europeans themselves. In up into the 1800s, matter of fact, in the early 1800s, not to, to the mid 1800s, they didn't even refer to themselves even by the jurisdictional national names in general. All Europeans collectively were generally called Christians. Christians, yeah. Mm. And this is Christian another don't. thing about history and sociology and anthropology that our people need to be taught because they don't know by claiming to be Christians, they just abandon their birthrights again. Because they think it's a spiritual system. They don't know it's a political system. Mm. So these, if, if we don't fix these things with our people, we can't fix the other problems, these symptoms which is the rooted in these basic civil problems. They don't know principles of civilization. They just keep on saying, uh, the black man was the founder of civilization. No, the black man is a slave. Because that's what the category is. Hmm. When you talk about the Asiatics or Africans that are free people, you, you, you must use their national names. The distinction between, say, an African, sorry, you, you're African, right? Or Asiatic African, right? And if she's not a slave, then if I ask her her political political allegiance, she's going to give me her constitution of her nation, she's going to name her nation, and she's going to give me a name that, that is a pedigree trace or noble title. If she say black, already, she's just category, already know that she has no nation. And there ain't no law to protect her. She just confessed it herself. Mm -hmm. Our people don't know that because somebody told them that human beings are crayons and they believed it. And the rest of them think Santa Claus is real. Mm -hmm. But you and bunny rabbits lay chicken eggs on Easter. You don't debate with them and you don't try to argue with them. You try to explain if they'll listen. But if they don't, you leave them alone because you can't help them. And there's no need to tell them anything else to law or rights or inheritances because it don't apply to them. Back to the Dred Scott case in principle. And this is why we try to teach certain principles so that people can understand how these things apply in society. They don't understand how it applies in society because no one takes the time to teach them because it's not in their economic interest to teach them. Do you understand what I'm saying? The principles that are presented here are humanitarian in their character because someone's got to love these people and tell them this because these, these degrees are sold to people for thousands of dollars and then they have to take oaths of death not to reveal them because once the people know this, the institutions collapse. <coughs>
Because the institutions live on the blind faith of these people because they're the bill payers.